Hi, so welcome to Doreen's African Experiences. This is um, a video. It's kind of very current as of now. So I'm basically showing you the process of making pavers. It's pretty much the same process as making blocks, but um, my older videos are probably not as close to clear. So I guess um, I'm going to make a series of videos trying to explain a few things even better. Now, when these pavers are, of course, as you can see, they're bigger than the regular, most of the regular pavers that's on the market. Obviously, a paver like this, this size, uh, for example, in Uganda, could go for about 2,500 each. And if you're taking many, they can give you probably at 2,000 shillings. But I don't think anyone can give you a paver this big less than that. Of course, without transportation. So you have to keep that in mind. And I think the small ones are a bit cheaper. But of course, you need more. And also, uh, they are... The, their lifespan is a bit shorter because these pavers are thick and big yeah which means that they can handle any kind of traffic car traffic food traffic even water itself they, they are capable of handling anything that that comes after them so that's the advantages of the this particular paver of course the others can but not at the same rate not they don't have the same lifespan yeah so the ratio is still one two to four uh, one bag of cement, two wheelbarrows of sand, like sand, and uh, four wheelbarrows of stone dust. What you have to know is quite simple. Whatever amount of sand you choose to put in your paver, you should double. Yes, you should double the amount of stone dust by that. And if you decide to use uh, plaster sand, that means you have to turn down the lake sand. Yes. Uh-huh. So basically the compression for with this machine is quite good. As you can see, as soon as we, we make the block we can lift it. Sorry, the paver we can lift it. Which is not common. Most people here when they I mean the other make methods, of course it, there is people using a big machines. They can also do the same, but it depends on your mix. You know, but that's one of the ways you can tell how strong a paver is or a block. If after compressing it immediately, someone can lift it or move it, yeah, because most of them they have to stay in one position uh, for at least three days. Even for some people, even go a week without, you know, without being able to move them. As you can see, I'm not working with very big space. Uh, so, step one, we flattened most of the ground because extra pressure can affect the pavers. So the ground has to be flat and these things apply to blocks as well Make your ground flat. That's number one. You need some wood. Yeah Now if it depends on how you do your thing if you don't if you don't do it the way I do it Then you don't need wood uh, for people who who use the, the local ways of making pavers by using the hand machines that's uh, that, that can be more you move the machine you can't move the block or the paver for those you basically just need a very leveled big ground so you can pop them you know anywhere really and leave them there but for us we can't exactly afford to make a paver and leave it in one position so uh you have to wait 24 hours before curing yes so for example if you make it today morning you can start curing the following day yeah, around the same time you make them. Uh, if you're covering while curing, you can cure once a day. But if you're not covering while curing, yeah, you have to cure in the morning and in the evening. Uh, basically, the reason, you see, curing is actually what makes these things strong. Because you could put stone dust, you could have the best cement in the world, but if your curing goes wrong, you know, if you don't cure the right way, you know, and um, of course it's not going to be strong. But the better the curing, the stronger whatever you're making. That's how you can make this, this any other way and they can still be strong. But of course there is a difference in their lifespan. 
uh the other thing that you need is taplins but basically pavers or blocks they don't like rain they love water but not too much water so there is a limited amount of water that's supposed to be exposed to them rain is not good for them especially if they are not yet fully cured the curing period can start from 14 days maximum sorry minimum to 28 days some people you can even cure for as long as you like yeah they they don't it's okay but if you're curing and they are they've gone past 14 days which means you can use them even then but past 14 days it means you you don't have to worry about the rain so much affecting them because they're already strong so they can the top ones can be eroded but not as much so even then try to cover them yeah but at least you're not as uh, under as much pressure yeah as right now when you just made them as you can see yeah don't put them directly on the ground the ground has water into it so these things can suck the water from the ground that's why sometimes you can cure and then realize that they are never the water is never leaving it's both a bad thing and a good thing it's good in the early stages but as it goes on it can be destroyed exactly that's why no, most people, if you're not living in a dry environment, like a semi-desert or desert or anything like that, they don't advise you to put them in your foundation. Yeah, because they don't easily lose water. And because of that, yeah, unless they're exposed to the sun, because of that, they can easily get weak. Yeah, water can destroy them. You know, not a lot, but too much water can destroy them. So under the ground, considering that the ground already sucks up a lot of water, they are not advisable to put in your foundation. Yeah. If you have a machine like this, you need to grease it. Don't use oil. Oil can corrode the metal and even make it, um, it can make it rust quickly. So that's why most people advise you to grease it yes and you have to keep it clean you know maintenance you have to keep maintaining it in order for it to not get destroyed now going forward yeah as you can see movement is very specific yeah do not just move these blocks or pavers yeah don't let people touch them if they're still fresh yeah only people that's that's trained yeah that know how to handle them should should hold them not anyone not any time don't let people just touch this they can destroy them especially the edges the edges are delicate so if someone who doesn't know what they're doing comes to play with them they're going to destroy them and they could be quite hard to sell or to even give to somebody if you've destroyed all the edges even just to use especially pavers because a paver gets into the next one they're like uh they're like an interlocking block you know if you destroy one edge it's it become it costs you in mortar which means you need to use more uh, a bigger or heavier mix to you know make up for the edges that's destroyed ah wood wood is one of the biggest challenges in this business and the rain too if your mix is wet of course the measurement changes it's a dry mix it has to be a dry mix I tried explaining in the previous video I'll do a next video showing you how to cure but try to make this like this usually for me I use a watering can to measure my water so basically you keep measuring as long as you can hold a ball that's not wet in your hand you can just um, I'm gonna show you in the next video how to do that thank you for watching